Welcome back to another video. We're gonna start with InShape Sculptor to discuss the modeling tools. So the first one will be control points. As you can see, we can use this to modify the shape of a surface using curves and control points. Now, in this case, I have a surface over here which was created in Jarty Shade Design. This is a multi-section surface. And if I will go over here on the control points, select the surface over here, we're going to receive uh, an information that uh, this has been created. Um, so therefore, since this is not a NURBS and cannot be modified, we can uh, click OK. The only drawback is that we're going to have the original mesh, but also the deformed one. So if I'm going to click OK in this case, we're going to see the mesh projected onto the surface of the existing multi-section surface. If I will go over here and I will click on display inflections, we're gonna see for each of those point, the inflection di direction over here. So it will be that arrow. We can also see the display deviation between uh, the original mesh and the projected curves on top of that. And we can also display the harmonization plane in this case. Now, if we want, we can change the overall control mesh on, onto that surface. As we can see, if I will rotate around, around the object, we're going to see that the control mesh over here on the right side will be elevated from the original surface. So we can click on, on the band um, harmonization and some of the points will be better positioned onto that mesh. We can also change uh, between uh, blend, mean plane, three points plane and screen plane for the overall harmonization over here. But by using the default um, band option, it's usually a good, uh, a good starting point. You can also add the symmetry, but in this case, we need to have that plane uh, positioned properly. So if I will go over here, I have a plane uh, over here. I can select uh, the symmetry. I can select the plane. And now if I will choose, for example, that point and that point, and I will go with them within the local tangent, and I will have them moved, we're going to see how we're going to have symmetry directly embedded over there. So in order to get started and see all of the available tools. I'm going to create a new surface from scratch over here. So I will go to create a new part. And I will jump within GRT shape design. So GSD in this case, I will enable all of those starting planes. And from the ZNX plane, I will define a new sketch. I will use a three point arc in order to define the following profile. So I'm going to have a radius of 100 over here. And using the constraint, I will also make this to be 100 millimeters in distance. Afterwards, I will define a new reference plane. So for example, at 100 millimeters. And over here, I will just draw a simple line that in this case I will constrain to be exactly the same length as the original one. And this will be the multi-section. So we're going to go with multi-section surface, starting from the first profile to the second one. You're going to see the arrow direction. So in this case, I need that to be within the other direction. So we see the flow of the arrows should be within the same um, direction. Therefore, we can generate that surface. I will also define the symmetry plane in this case, which I know will be positioned at 50 millimeters over there. So this will be the case study surface. I will expand the feature tree over there and jump back to Shape Sculptor. I'm going to enable the control points. And we see over here for the elements that we need to select the surface. 
we're gonna have the same information warning so we won't be able to change the original but using the modeling tool from shape sculptor we're gonna define a new surface so we're gonna click ok we're gonna see that control mesh which can be um, let's say harmonized in this case and let's start with the first options over here so we have the normal to compass these are the the support tools and underneath we have the filtering so if i will go only for points only now i can select points in order to select multiple points keep in mind that you need to hold down the control key and this is mostly for selection we can also go for mesh only and mesh will give us the curves that define the surface so we see how those will be selected if i want to select two of them i'm again i will hold down control and afterwards we can have those um, selected and displaced we can also go for points and mesh at the same time and we can go for the selection so this will select everything and this will deselect all the points So let's start with the normal to compass. This will be influenced by the position of the original shapes. So based on, uh, on the compass. If I will go with mesh only in this case, for example, I will select this loop over here. And if I will move my mouse, we're going to see that uh, we're going to have the possibility to elevate the surface. But if I will go into the bottom section, we're going to see that we can we can have this curve and bend outwards. The other points will still remain within the same position. So this is um, important. If you are working with crystal surface, you can still remain within the original constraints. So this was the normal to compass. As we can see, we only have those two directions for normal to compass. So the up and down over here. If you're gonna go to the next one, which will be mesh line, we're gonna see that for mesh line we're gonna have the other direction. So in this case, I can go towards the inner surface, or I can go over here on to the outwards. It will be the same within the other direction, and we see how that newly defined shape will uh, will be done over there. Afterwards, we have the local normals. If I will go again with the mesh only, with the local normal selected, I can have this extended onto that direction. So now depending on the mouse, even though I'm also raising the mouse and also uh, move it to the sides, this will only go to the local normals. We can have this um, moved around. But if we go within the following one, compass plane, we're going to see that now we can change the different direction. And the other one, the local tangent, as we can see, we can also bend it over here onto the local tangent. So all of this will give you some different direction, how you can manipulate that, um, that surface. And we can also have the screen plane, which in this case, we're going to see that this will allow us to go within a uh, all directions so we see the crosser over there if i will select it i can also bend it within this direction to the top to the left and top and also to the to the bottom so keep that in mind that you can really manipulate using uh, all of those selections the screen plane will give you the most um, flexibility in this case and uh, we can also use the symmetry plane like we saw previously so if i will select that we're gonna see how that mesh will be automatically mirrored so it will have that embedded symmetry position over there and afterwards if i will go for example with point selection i will select those three points and i will go with local tangency for them you're gonna see how we can change again that shape or we can go with the local normals in this case and um, have that move upwards. Now, since both of our modified and initial surface are yellow, it's a little bit harder to understand the intersection between those. 
Therefore, I will click OK over here. And uh, the multi section surface, which is the original one, I will have this converted to a different color. So in this case, that will be green. And the newly defined surface will be the yellow one. Now, if I will double click on this surface, we're going to see that the control points will not be automatically loaded. So this is just an output surface without a history. But if you want to further change the, um, the shape of that, we can just select it, go back to control points. And uh, again, we're going to have that um, control um, rig defined by vertices and uh, edges position onto that um, that surface and we can further change it along if you want to we can add that symmetry again and that will automatically mirror our uh, our deformations at the bottom over here we can also change the smoothing of this so if you want um, smoother edges or not you can change over here the slider for more smoothed edges or for um, or non uh, smoothed edges. So, <laughs> overall, this was an overview regarding the control points. I also have over here this file open, so this is from their documentation. And over here, all of those surfaces have not been generated. Um, well, some of them could have been generated using a generative shape design, but they have been later extracted as only the resulting surface. Therefore, where I will enable control points onto this one, we don't want to have that notification regarding um, that uh, the original mesh cannot be changed. So we can do the same over here. For example, this is the multi-surface that was created. I can go over here, copy this and uh, paste it as a result. And again, this will be surface three over here. So on that surface, if I will enable this, we're going to see that um, this is entitled surface four. So I will just click OK. And we still have that warning, even though that has been copied since it was generated using a multi section. And this can be enabled also on a mesh surface. So over here we have a planar mesh. Again, we can um, we can modify this accordingly. So this is the main advantage of um, Shape Sculptor and control points in order to further control the output of the of the surface. So I hope that you find this video useful. I will position a similar video on the left side of the screen. I will add this to the Katia V5 tips and tricks, and I will also add the subscribe button. So that's it. Thanks for watching.